Gilgalad is a physical damaging commander with maximum potential, meaning that each point you gain in respect helps to add just another function to him or his troops. He has the ability, in my opinion, to give anyone a hard fight, especially the amount of varying builds that you can have, uh, such as counters to glass cannons, witch king, or regular balance commanders. In this video, we're going to take a look at just his regular balance build and what, what the best equipment, etc., is for him. I really hope you enjoy. So, Gilgalad is a tier 3 commander. He has gained respect through the High King of Noldor's banner, or you can recruit him through his invitation. He's listed as the leader role, meaning that you gain 5 extra command once he reaches level 20. He's also recommended to leave elf, uh, lead elven units and also has the control speciality, meaning that he carries skills that carry control abilities. His unique item, Agloss, I wouldn't personally recommend. Whilst it does have some great stats like boosting his might, the attack and defense of elves, which is very much needed, and also chucking in a little bit of healing in there, it's very good, but in my opinion, it's not as good as the Elven White Knife, which takes a lot less to get it uh, get it fully refined uh, and fully strengthened. So in my opinion, I'd stick with the Elven White Knife and not bother with Agloss. His stats, as you can see, are very balanced. His might increases at 1.9 per level, his focus at 2.02 .02 per level, and his speed at 1.08 per level. So he's a very balanced commander, capable of both increasing his troops damage and also reducing their damage taken. So moving into his skill tree, the first Respect Zero skill tree begins with Icicle, which deals 10% physical damage and also inflicts a guaranteed stun for one round. This is applicable against two enemy units and it will hit every third round. Once fully uh, maximised with 15 Respect points, this will inflict 150% physical damage and you'll also gain 15 might. The first sub skill is Precise Blow. This activates every second turn and initially affects one enemy unit with 40% physical damage. This effect also carries Pursuit, which means that if the opponent's using Evasion, uh, it will hit through that evasion regardless. Then when maximized, this can do up to 280% physical damage. The second sub skill is Dazzle which hits on every fourth round, so round four and round eight, and it has a chance to inflict stun on the enemy commander for two rounds, so that would leave them out of action for rounds five and six, and also nine and ten. When fully maximised, this chance is increased to 100%. The second Respect Zero skill tree begins with Kingly Kin. So for this, for the first two rounds, you gain up to 70% chance to evade all damage for your elven units. And also you can get defense plus 10 for your elven units. The next sub skill is well prepared. Well prepared gives your units a counter attack when hit, or your melee units, sorry, a counter attack when hit by enemy units within range. Uh, initially this only deals 3% damage, but when fully maximized this is 21% damage. The second Respect Zero uh, sub-skill on under Kingly Kin is Exorbitance, which makes your units deal 14% more damage. The Respect 3 skill tree is a standard White Council skill tree. So the White Council title skill offers up to 20% reduced damage for your thir first three instances of damage. When fully maximized, this will trigger a fourth time so you can avoid 20% da uh, damage for the first four instances. The top sub skill is the very useful for fighting evil high alert skill, which can reduce the focus, burn and poison damage received by your units by up to 50%. The second sub skill on this uh, skill tree is the champion of light skill. This makes all of your allied units do bonus damage against orc, urukai and troll units. Initially, this begins at 4%, however, it goes up to 28% when fully, uh, when we've got 7 skill points in there. And the rank 5 skill tree begins with High King. 
This reduces the damage received by your allied elven units, and when 15 respect points are allocated, this does 15% effect, and you also get plus 3 HP on all of your elven units. The top sub skill is Chaotic Retreat, which reduces the defense of your enemy units by 5 points for each skill, uh, skill point allocated. And the bottom respect 5 skill is Elven Leader, which gives your Elven units a chance of follow up every single round. When you allocate 7 skill points, this goes up to a 25% chance for your units to gain follow up. Follow up meaning, of course, that they can have a second attack in each round. So, into my recommended build for Gilgalad. In this, I'm not looking for a specific counter. So, for example, you can build Gilgalad to be an excellent counter uh, for commander damage based forces. But in this build, I'm just going to go for the standard meta build focused around buffing Gilgalad's elven units, as well as debuffing the opponents. Uh, so, this will be the order I also recommend putting the skills in when you first level up Gilgalad. So first up, I would recommend putting as many points as possible into Kingly Kin. The reason for this is, when Kingly Kin is fully maximised, you gain a huge amount of chance, 70%, to evade all damage on your Elven units for the first two rounds. This is huge, as if you can avoid all damage, obviously you keep a lot of troops alive, and you can inflict a huge amount of damage on the opposition. So once you get to that third round, where they can then hit you with damage, They've got such a reduced number of units that the amount of damage they can inflict is very minimal. Additionally, maximising Kingly Kin also gives your Elven units a massive plus 10 to their defence. This is very much needed as Elven units are very what I would call squishy, so they have low defence and HP, so they can get uh, killed quite quickly without the necessary evasion and defence buff. So I definitely recommend getting this as soon as possible. Once you put 5 points into Kingly Kin though, I would recommend putting 1 point into Icicle. The reason for this is, you don't want to miss out on that stun. We're not really too bothered about the 10% physical damage dealt to the enemy units, but the guaranteed chance to inflict a 1 round stun every 3 rounds on 2 enemy units is too good to pass up. But the only reason I don't recommend putting the 1 point in Icicle first is because it would then lock out the other rank uh, respect zero skill tree until you'd use five skill points. So I use five in Kingly Kin, then one in Icicle, then come back and maximize Kingly Kin for that huge chance of evasion. After that, I would recommend looking towards Exorbitance and putting seven points into Exorbitance. This is fairly simple to describe. You just want that plus 14% damage. When combined with not taking damage in the first two rounds, the amount of damage you deal is enormous and again just culls off the enemy units. Next up we're going to look at the Respect 5 skill tree. So we're going to look to put 15 points into High King. We're taking High King again for the obvious reasons. We just want that flat 15% damage debuff. Which will be very useful on our units again to keep the squishy units alive. This is further helped by the plus 3 HP gained once you have 15 skill points in High King. Once we have 15 points in High King, we're going to look to put the next points, up to 7, into Elven Leader. The reason we want 7 points in Elven Leader is for this 25% chance to gain follow-up. Whilst Elven units are quite squishy and have low defence, they do have very high damage stats. So the 1 in 4 chance of them hitting twice uh, for each unit in each round is brilliant, because it means that this will trigger fairly regularly you know, over the course of a 10 round battle and getting a double attack will massively increase your damage. To further this, the seven points after that we're going to look to put into Chaotic Retreat. As I said, we're already hitting hard and we're also hitting twice quite often. So what we can then look to do is debuff the enemy's defense by 35 when fully maximized Chaotic Retreat. This is huge. Ma massively reducing their defense will again increase our damage by quite a lot. So we want to get 7 points in there, but it's not as much of a priority as all the other skills we've put in so far. So you'll only be looking to do this towards your later levels. Any remaining skill points you have, I would recommend putting into the White Council skill tree. So in my case, I can get this up to 10 skill points, which is very useful as I can therefore reduce the damage taken for my allied units' first 3 instances by 12.6%. 
If you have more skill points, I definitely recommend maximizing this so that you can get that damage trigger in an extra time. If you happen to be uh, rank 15 or above, what you can do once you've maximized the White Castle skill tree is therefore put one more point into Icicle so you can start putting points into the Dazzle skill. This can then also grant you a chance to stun the enemy commander. Though I understand this is very niche as not many people will have a tier 3 commander that high of a respect level. And there you have it, so that's the final build. You end up with a commander who's capable of not just buffing his elves to giving them follow up and massively increased damage, he also massively harms the opponent's capabilities to do damage by giving his units the evade, reducing their damage received through High King and White Council, and also stopping them in their tracks from early attacks using the Icicle skill. All this combined makes Gilgalad one of the best good side commanders available in the game. So now let's look into the recommended equipment for this build of Gilgalad. For his flawless weapon, I would recommend using the Mirkwood Bow with the Elves Strength buff. The reason we're using this is it gives very good bonuses to Might and Speed, and also plus 3 attack to your ranged units. The Elves Strength buff is also very useful as we will be using an All Elven Army, as you'll see later on, so getting up to 9% bonus damage from your Elves again is a huge buff. Elven units do a huge amount of damage, particularly the ranged ones, so you want to take advantage by trying to maximise this as much as possible. For flawless armour, my personal preference is the scale mail with melee vigour. The reason for this is, is that the elven units are very squishy, so we want to try and boost their defence as much as possible, which the scale mail provides. On top of that, melee vigour will particularly help your melee elven units to stay alive even further. Another option, though in my opinion not the optimal option, is to use the hunter's skin with ranged vigour. The reason you would go for this is because it adds bonus defense to your ranged units and also ranged vigor reduces the damage received again by your ranged units. Though in my opinion the issue with this is not buffing the melee units at the front means that your opposition's melee units, once they've cut these down, will then be able to attack directly onto your ranged units, which could cause you to lose a lot more units. For flawless headgear, I would recommend the Trapper's Hood with Hysteria. This grants good bonuses to focus and speed. What we're mainly looking for is that plus three further attack to your ranged units. Once again, just to try and maximize the damage we can get out of those powerful elven ranged units. Having Hysteria in addition is great because it gives us a chance every two rounds to give one enemy unit madness, which can make a difference if you do trigger that madness and they attack their own units, reduces the damage you receive and obviously increases the amount of damage your opponent receives. So it can never be a bad thing. And lastly, for an accessory, we're going to look to use the Harp of Lothlorien. The effect on this, you do have quite a good choice of which one you want to use. So the Harp of Lothlorien actually has three very useful effects. The first of these I'm going to look into is Sustain. So Sustain pri provides a heal to all of your allied units every two rounds. This is particularly good uh, in early, early game when you're looking to use Gilgalad as a Tyler, for example, to reduce your losses. The next choice is Elf Strength, which is, in my opinion, the most consistent and best buff for the Harp of Lothlorien on Gilgalad. This provides all of your Elven units a uh, damage buff by up to 9%, which again is huge just for increasing that damage and amount and making Gilgalad just deal huge amounts of damage. However, of course, if you're facing against other opponents in PvP, such as other Gilgalads, or say Gandalf the Grey, opponents that use a lot of avoidance or evasion, the elf strength will not be as strong as if you chose to use the third possible effect, which is Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark provides for the first three rounds for all allied units and Gilgalad himself a 90% chance to gain pursuit, meaning that you can hit opponents that are using evasion. So therefore, it's, in my opinion, it's, a, it's important to have a look at which one of these you have. I'd always recommend having a pursuit item handy, just in case you do come up against a lot of opponents using uh, using evasion. Sorry. However, the flat best buff, in my opinion, is elf strength. So if you have the only only the choice of one of these, that's the one I would go for. 
Now on to exquisite equipment. The best exquisite weaponry, as I stated earlier when taking a look at Agloss, is the Elven White Knife. For all commanders that use Elven units, the Elven White Knife is the undisputed king of weaponry, particularly with the Might of Elves effect. The reason for this is it provides a huge amount of bonus might, but the main thing is it provides a huge amount of bonus attack for all of your Elven units. So not just the ranged units, also your melee units as well. When fully strengthened, you can get up to plus six attack on your Elven units, which is huge. The Might of Elves also provides a bonus 2% damage dealt to all, from all of your Elven units for each refine you go through, up to a maximum of 12%. So again, this is a huge amount of damage buff, and as you can see, it's a lot more than you'll get from the Mirkwood Bow. So it's definitely worth investing in the Elven White Knife. Right, for exquisite uh, chest piece, I'd recommend the High Elf Hauberk. The Elven Cloak is also a good choice that provides bonus uh, focus and HP and can be good with the resistance effect if you're coming against a lot of focus and burn damage. However, as a more consistent item, I prefer the High Elf Hauberk which provides bonus might, focus, and speed, but primarily what we're looking for, as I said with the scale mail, is that bonus defense. The reason the High Elf Hallberg is so much better than the scale mail is it provides bonus defense to both your ranged and your melee units. So when I was talking about whether you want to use uh, the two pieces of equipment in Flawless, one bo boosted defense for range, the other boosted defense for melee. The High Elf Hallberg, when using Elven units, will buff both, which is a huge improvement. On top of that, if you give it the Fortitude of Elves or Resilience of Elves effect, both are brilliant again for reducing the damage taken. Fortitude of Elves reduces the damage received by a flat amount. Resilience of Elves provides further bonus defense. A third possible chess piece option is the Ranger's Shroud. If you're looking to maybe be a little bit more of a glass cannon and just up your damage as much as, much as possible. The Ranger's Shroud, the benefit of that is you can get additional bonus attack for your ranged units. Though in my opinion, for longevity, you probably want to buff that defense more than the attack, as the attack's already being buffed pretty heavily by your other pieces of equipment. For headgear, similarly, you have two choices on whether you want your commander and troops to be a little bit more defensive and last a bit longer, or whether you want to go for a bit more glass cannon and maximum attack. The more defensive choice, and my personal favorite, is the High Elf's Helmet. The High Elf's Helmet is similar to the High Elf's Hauberk. It provides bonus might, focus and speed, as well as bonus defense for all elves in your army. And it's similar to the Hauberk again, it can also get the Fortitude of Elves effect, giving you a flat damage received buff for all of your elven units. The more offensive choice is to go for the Hunter's Guide. The Hunter's Guide pro provides bonus might and focus, as well as additional attack for the ranged units in your army. For buffs, it also has a couple of good choices. You have Fortitude of Archers, which can reduce damage for your ranged units. Discord, which at a high refinement can give you a, a good chance to inflict madness for the first two rounds against all enemy units. Or you have, in my opinion, the best effect in the game for headgear. You have the Aegis option, which provides for the first four rounds for your armies each round, a chance to be immune to both stun and madness. So this is a good choice if you can get it to high refinement, as if you combine the Ranger's Shroud, uh, the Hunter's Guide, and Immunity to Madness and Stun, you will deal enormous amounts of damage, particularly in the early rounds. In my opinion, when deciding between the High Elf uh, gear or the Ranger's Shroud and the Hunter's Guide, I think it's important not to get stuck half-half between each of these. If you're going to go for the Ranger's Shroud, then go for the Hunter's Guide and go for that full maximum damage. But similarly, if you're going to use the High Elf Hauberk, go for the High Elf Helm as well and give your army that extra defence. Just commit one way or the other, in my opinion. Lastly, for exquisite accessories, we're going to look to use the Silver Harp of Rivendell with the Might of Elves effect. The Silver Harp of Rivendell is brilliant. It provides bonus might and focus and also is one of the few accessories that can provide bonus defence again to your Elven units. If you use it with the Might of Elves effect, it can also provide up to 12% bonus damage again for all of your Elven units. So you can see the general theme of the equipment 
is to look to toughen up those soft, squishy uh, elven units and also to buff the damage dealt primarily by your ranged units so you can deal massive damage whilst keeping the opponent at bay. Now into troop compositions. I have kind of three different choices for these which are all pretty similar. The first up is going to be just a standard elf army. We're going to look to use a breakdown of heralds, bow knights and sentinels. The reason for this is these are all the, the standard available tier 3 elven units. Uh, so the heralds will be your melee unit designed mainly to soak up the damage. As I've said previously they're not particularly great at this so definitely need those defensive buffs to keep them alive. Though they do provide a strong counter attack and provide pretty decent damage compared to most melee units in the game. You have the bow knights which sit behind. These are cavalry units so they can reduce some of their damage uh, taken thanks to the mounted skill and they're also a little bit more tanky than other ranged units. They're also particularly good if you come up against evil using large units such as trolls or great beasts as they provide bonus damage against these. The last unit we're going to look to use is the sentinel and the sentinel is an absolutely fantastic unit, deals a massive amount of damage and also has the chance to avoid its first instance of damage. These will be our primary damage dealing unit. The second troop composition as you can see is almost exactly the same except for instead of bow knights we're going to sub this out for the tier 2 version of the sentinel which is the marksman. The reason we're looking to do this is that the marksman doesn't deal too dissimilar damage to the sentinel and are also extremely cheap. The issue with bow knights being cavalry units is they cost a lot of resources and a lot of time to conscript. So if you're trying to get armies pumped out as quickly as possible, it could be better to use this marksman unit. It's a lot cheaper and conscripts a lot quicker. The downside, of course, is it doesn't have the defensive capabilities of the bow knights. So if these units get hit by an enemy commander or unit, they will die at a rapid rate. But they are capable of dealing absolutely fantastic damage if you can keep them alive. And the last troop composition we're looking at is pretty similar again, but this time we're just going to sprinkle in some of the, uh, the new neutral units, which are the Keepers. These units are very, very strong damage-wise, dealing a huge amount of damage. Uh, in Tactics Evolved, they also have a chance for follow-up, meaning they can get an additional bonus attack separate from Gil Galad's follow-up chance in his skill tree. So you can deal enormous amounts of damage with these, though defensively they die very, very quickly. So you want to be very careful with these as they can die very quickly and are very expensive. But of course, the amount of damage they deal could be enormous if you get that evasion from Gilgalad's skill tree to keep them alive. So now we're going to look at a couple of battle reports that come primarily from me facing off against an evil faction. You can see first up, I'm facing off against a Witch King of exactly the same level. He is missing a couple of troops, but the game lists are uh, troop strength, both in the 230,000, so it's pretty similar. You'll see here that we defeated him with almost no troop loss at all. We lost about 750 uh, heralds, and we lost was it 21 of our sentinels. You can see here the capability of that tier 2 elven unit as well dealing a massive 81k of damage. I think that's because it must have procced the uh, the follow-up more than the Sentinels did, but dealt a huge amount of damage. You can see here, we also managed to evade all of that damage from those Alchemists right at the beginning of the fight, courtesy of our evade. So we didn't get any damage from that massive Alchemist burst at the beginning, which is enormous, because we then just took them out and they didn't deal a single amount of damage. You can see my gear here, I am using the Cask of Pride for that bonus defense to our melee units because at this point in time I didn't have the High Elf Helm. I've also gone for the Elves Strength uh, buff on my Harp. The opponent was not using Pursuit, which is the primary thing to see here. You can see his gear is a pretty similar level to mine. However, the main thing is that he wasn't using an accessory with Pursuit, meaning that he couldn't hit through that evasion on my Gill. That is the main thing that you have to watch out for when using Gilgalad, is if your opponent is using a Pursuit accessory, they will be able to get through that evasion at the start of your first few rounds, which is the primary skill that makes Gil so strong. You'll see second up here, I'm facing off again against a Gorbag, using a very popular build, 
So he's got a lot of good good equipment, buffs his orcs massively, and what he's looking to do is buff those reapers so that in later rounds his reapers can just dish out a huge amount of damage. Uh, Gorbag nowadays is quite a popular commander, one of the meta commanders uh, for evil side in T tier 1 in my opinion. Uh, and he's also a similar level here, level 43 to my 44. But you can see once again, We've dealt a huge amount of damage, same troop composition again, using the tier 2 archers with sentinels and heralds. Um, and you can see we take barely any damage at all, yet we have to dish out a huge amount of damage. We only allowed those reapers to deal th uh, almost 14,000 damage, so basically nothing at all. So he's focused on, he's using both stalkers and reapers in this, so he's trying to really focus on that later rounds, which is probably where he struggled because... We just didn't let him get to the later rounds. We killed him by that point. He then immediately attacked us again. You can see he's got an even more different troop composition again. Using uh, stalkers this time with full Morgul Arbalests. I think he's just chucking the kitchen sink at us at this point. But you can see we get hit by this again by the same Gorbag. And then we get hit by another Gorbag from another player. Immediately after exactly the same time. Slightly lower leveled. But again... Pretty much no damage at all. So we're just cutting through these gore bags one by one. This one again is using the tier, uh, the rank respect 10 item. You can see that no matter what we're getting hit with, we are suffering almost no loss at all and just completely wiping their army. The reason for this being, as I said, the enemy is not using pursuit. So if you can avoid the opponents using pursuit, you'll get reports similar to this where the opponents just deal no damage at all and you wipe their armies out completely. Anyway, with that, I'm going to look to end the video. I really hope that what you've seen has been informative. If it has, please drop a like and please consider subscribing. I do drop a lot of Rise to War videos and I have more planned in the pipeline for the future. If you do, I really hope to see you on the next one.